This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got two full weeks of college football in the books, and Colorado is still undefeated and still hot, and they've got another game this week coming up, but this time, they're pretty big favorites. We're going to talk about their matchup here with Colorado State, break down whether Colorado can cover a pretty big uh, pretty big spread here in this one, talk about other big Week 3 games, and get Dr. Ed Feng's read on his favorite bets for Week 3 at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and on FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank. And Ed, we are on to week three in college football. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm feeling a little bit of fall chill in the air here in Ann Arbor. And uh, that definitely means more college football to come. And, and that's very exciting. I've officially made the transition into long sleeves and jeans. And Ed, let me say, as someone who is a larger individual shedding the the getting out of my summer clothes, transitioning to fall clothes where I'm not going to sweat constantly is like the best time we could possibly have. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about week three in college football here in a second. Break down Ed's thoughts on Colorado. We're talking about the the play clock clock rules as well. So a couple different things we're going to be focusing on for this week to get you ready for week three and look forward as well for the rest of this college football season. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Our first look at NFL week number two went up yesterday via myself and Ryan Williams. I broke down spots where I see value in my mod of week two. Ryan talks in futures he likes and much more. We're going to have a full breakdown of NFL week two tomorrow with Ed. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. You can also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV Plus by going to FanDuel.com slash watch or checking out FanDuel TV Plus on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and Illinois. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Help is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 19-23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV re- base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment. Commercial use is excluded. Let's shift our focus now and talk about week number three here in college football. And we're going to talk about the games here in a second. But first, we talked going into the year about the impact of the new play clock rules where the clock no longer stops after first downs, which obviously is a big impact on totals with college football we've got three full weeks of data or two and a half weeks of data now based on what you've seen thus far once you are running your totals model for college football how are you going to tweak things to account for that new rule 
Probably actually not tweaking things as, as much as you might think. It was interesting running through the data. You know, there was a team, a team scored on average 27.3 points uh, last season. And that's only down slightly. It's 26.7. So not even actually a full point uh, difference. So that would be almost, you know, two points on the total. That's not a ton and not quite as much as people expected. Obviously, you're going to get a little bit of noise with a small sample size of games so far. You know, there's maybe some FBS versus FCS that are skewing those numbers. Another good thing, so I'll, I'll keep, I will continue to keep an eye on it. Maybe that changes as we get into these more tougher conference games, um, but we shall see. I also actually looked at the number of plays because um, this was uh, something – the number of plays is actually probably a better metric for how paces, uh, you know, how the clock changes are affecting things. Uh, it doesn't look like it's changed too much. Uh, there have been 67.8 plays the, the last two seasons, uh, approximately. Uh, it's down two plays, so 65.5. I believe the expectation before the season, it was more like going to be like four plays per game. So, you know, not, not a ton. Um, and... Well, actually, maybe maybe four plays per game. If it's two per team, then it's four plays per game. Uh, so, you know, probably not as much as, like, we expected and not as big of an impact on the scoreboard. So I will continue to keep an eye on it. But, um, you know, I think it kind of matters more for – yeah, it might not matter as much as we thought. And it's important to have a data-centric approach for this because, at least on Twitter, you've seen, like, these anecdotes about how, like – college football games are suddenly lower scoring now as a result of uh, these new play clock rules, but those are largely refuted by the data. Um, and it's important to have a data centric approach for stuff like this. where We actually have data to look at. So uh, ignore some random stuff you may see on Twitter. The data says it's not as big of a, an impact as, you know, we may have thought, but add shocker that Twitter might be a bit misleading at times. Wait, what are people saying on Twitter? Might this just is one thread. Accounts. The one what? thread about how like some Oklahoma game was like way lower scoring than it was last year. It was like a one game sample and it was very annoying, but people like latched onto it and it got traction yeah. somehow. Well, that's fine. I mean, if that, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, probably not affecting the markets, but I mean, if you want to go down a one, one game rabbit hole, I'm going to guess people like buying it. into one thread on Twitter probably are not going to be people affecting markets too much. Unfortunately, probably, <laughs> probably. Oh, well, alas. Uh, but regardless, nice to know things are relatively status quo in that regard. Let's take a look at some week three games here. Let's talk about Minnesota going in the road to take on UNC, where this game right now sees UNC favored by seven and a half, taking on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Ned, looking at Minnesota's first couple of games, I think the offense has been a bit underwhelming, not really lighting things up against Nebraska and Eastern Michigan, but that's, you know, based on looking at just the points scored. And as we know, points scored aren't everything. So what's your read on this offense from Minnesota through the first couple of games? Yeah, I mean, I think that might be a little bit misleading. Um, you know, Minnesota's offense had almost 50% success rate against EMU. Um, so that that's, that's pretty good. The college football average is about 41, 42%. And then, you know, in Nebraska's defense might actually be good. Um, you know, they held Colorado to a 41% success rate. So, um, you know, Colorado – so Nebraska was minus three in turnovers in that game, which is part of the reason that the margin got a little bit bigger than we expected. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not completely down on Minnesota's offense just yet. Um, on the other side of the ball, you know, you have North Carolina at that. You know, we kind of uh, – we don't really know about this team. We think the offense is going to be good with Drake May, and that that's probably right. But the defense had an amazing performance. Uh, you know, week one against South Carolina allowed a 34% success rate. Not as good last week in App State in a much closer game, allowed almost a 44% success rate. It was a unit that we really had a lot of suspicion about. So I think it was important not to take too much from just one game against South Carolina. Overall, my numbers have this at UNC minus eight, so not seeing any value in this game. And um, yeah, so I'll pass on the on the side here. Yeah, the UNC offense probably not one will be too suspect of, uh, based on the fact they've got Drake May there. Uh, I know they've had a lot of turnover, obviously, but 
pretty pretty fun offense for sure. And uh, if Ed is in line at the market, then I am okay ignoring that one personally. Let's instead talk about Tennessee at Florida. Where right now, Tennessee is a six and a half point favorite. Total in this game is 58 and a half. And we saw this Tennessee team that undergo a lot of turnover from 2022 to 2023. It was in key pieces, especially on offense. And they look pretty good uh, through the first couple of games. So when you look at Tennessee with the current offense and current team they have constructed, what is the ceiling like for them in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure I agree that they they look pretty good. You know, like they, they actually only had a 41% passing success rate against Austin P. They were uh, one of my 48 and a half point favorites. Uh, ended up winning 30 to 13 here. So, so I'm not convinced that they, they've been good. And whenever I see Joe Milton, uh, I tend to think I I don't I don't know. I mean this this guy has uh, not been the starter in uh, has lost the starting job three times already. So at Michigan and a couple years ago at Tennessee when he lost it to Hennon Hooker. So I, I think the jury is still out there. I'm not, uh, you know, Tennessee is a team that we had high expectations uh, about in, in the preseason. Um, so I'm not ready to throw in the towel yet. And, and it actually brings in, uh, you know, kind of a pretty interesting point. Like uh, I had Tennessee preseason. I would have made Tennessee about a seven and a half point favorite, which is, you know, a little bit more than the markets are right now. And um, right now, like I'm only making them um, about a three point favorite in this game. And the reason is because I really downgraded them after the Austin P game last week. And you can really ask whether I should do that. Uh, I actually just had a conversation with Mike Craig this morning. It will be posted on the football analytics show pretty soon. And I asked him about what, you know, what he does with these FBS versus FCS games and, you know, I mean, he, he basically said for games in which the uh, point spread is huge, he is more likely to ignore it. So that would mean that, you know, this prediction is probably going to be closer to six and a half. If you just throw out the Tennessee versus Austin P game last week, the idea is like Tennessee is not going to throw everything out there. They know they're going to Florida this upcoming week, a much bigger game. They're not going to get up for an FCS opponent. Um. Anyway, I think the jury's still out in Tennessee. Uh, Florida, you know, that was was the exact opposite. You know, they had McNeese State last week before this big game, and they pounded them. And, you know, the metrics underlying that game suggested that was – was. Uh, I mean, basically, they played like they should have against McNeese State. Tennessee really didn't. So, you know, my numbers are showing a ton of value. Um, I think in this one, I'm less likely to, uh, pull the trigger on Florida plus six and a half because of that. And, and that's simply because, you know, like, I'm not sure what to make out of one FCS game. Uh, you know, maybe moving forward, if we see a lackluster performance from Tennessee again, especially on the offensive side of the ball, uh, against the Florida defense that, you know, we didn't really trust too much coming into the season, uh, I'd be more likely to be fading the volunteers. I think that's an interesting dynamic too, because Mike Craig is obviously a very sharp guy and a guy we've had in the show here before, uh, extremely uh, someone who I respect a lot with regards to his thoughts in college football. So him saying that is obviously important, but also we've talked here on the show about how it is still important when good teams do what they should against bad teams. And you could kind of talk about it either way. So I feel like to me, I understand both sides of the argument. So I'm curious you know, I feel like for you, when you're showing that much value, I, I guess I'm a bit surprised that you're not going to take it. But I think that I think that I guess I get it, too, because we both respect Mike a lot and you can also understand his side of the argument. So I understand it. I, I guess that, you know, it's just it's it's definitely a tough thing to weigh when looking at stuff this point in the year. Right. And I feel like if I if I knew either of these teams more in depth then maybe I'd be more likely to pull the trigger. If Tennessee were a team like TCU, then that would be a lot different. A team that I thought was overrated heading into the right. season. Um, Florida, uh, you know, like the uh, the result at Utah was probably not, uh, the, the scoreboard was probably a little bit harsher to Florida than it should have been. So <clears throat> there's, there's, there's a lot of things I, I think that um, – it, it is possible to take advantage of my number on this, but I think you need a little bit more in-depth knowledge about it. And I also think that the 
like the null hypothesis, if we're going to talk in, you know, your Stanford PhD terms, the null hypothesis should be that you're not going to bet a game and you have to be convinced that you want to sure. bet a game. And exactly. if you have reason where you can't, re- you know, you can't convince yourself to bet a game, don't bet it. That's the, the beauty of betting college football is you can bet a lot of other games. Those other games could include Colorado taking on Colorado State, the host of College Game Day for this weekend. Obviously, Colorado has lit it up at across their first couple of games, but this time around, they are big time favorites. 22 and a half is the spread for this game. Colorado, Colorado State at FanDuel Sportsbook, and the total is 59 and a half. So, Ed, we talked about the numbers in Colorado entering last week, but your numbers now have one more game to factor in there where Colorado won convincingly. Obviously, the success rate may not have been as high for them in that game, but scored a lot of points. So, now with two weeks of data on this very fresh team, what are your numbers saying about them right now? I have bumped them up past the uh, FBS average. So uh, I'm a 59th now, point, uh, about a half point better than FBS average. That is going to be on the low side. Um, I, I just obviously like I have one um, system that updates every team and there's just some teams that just don't fit into that system and it, it makes it hard to get to where the markets are, which are, you know, probably it, which are in, in this case, definitely better than, than what I have. So I'm definitely adjusting on Colorado. Uh, I still think um, th- this is definitely not the week to fade Colorado. If that's what you're inclined to do, which is something that I am inclined to do. Colorado state is, is not good. Um, they, they have been in the hundreds for a couple of years in terms of their rank and, They got blown out week one against Washington State. And, you know, it was one of these things where the scoreboard was actually probably kinder to Colorado State than what actually happened on the football field. So Colorado should win this one. They should win this one pretty easily. I find it interesting that game day has decided to go to Boulder this week when they have Oregon and USC coming up in the two weeks after those should be, uh, I don't know. I mean, those, those games should get some pretty good ratings yeah. Uh, because Oregon and USC are both pretty good teams. And I'm pretty sure FanDuel has a line for that up. I think I saw uh, Oregon minus 14 and a half against Colorado at the very bottom there, if you check it. So, yeah, I mean, look, I you know, I, I think I talked about last week that uh, I like Nebraska plus three. That didn't work out. And Colorado won pretty comfortably and should have won pretty comfortably. They got upgraded in my numbers again. And yeah, I mean, I, I still have them a little bit underrated. I can't get to this number of Colorado, um, you know, minus 22 and, and whatnot against Colorado State. They're going to have the spotlight in that 10 p.m. window. And uh, I think they're going to get a lot of attention and that's going to be great. Uh, but it'll be, you know, it's going to be even better the next two weeks when they play some real competition. So that Oregon game you mentioned, uh, Oregon currently 14 and a half point favorite against Colorado at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is for next week. And we've talked about this before, but your college football model reacts a lot more quickly now than the old model in large part because of the transfer portal. So at what point are you going to say, okay, I have enough data. My model reacts quickly enough. We're going to put a lot of stock in what the model is saying about Colorado and feel confident in fading them if you're still inclined at that time. Well, so so I didn't use the new model because of the transfer portal. Uh, I used the new model because I found it to be more accurate than what I was using before, which was based on strength of schedule adjustments in season. Uh, it, it just turns out to be better to react week to week in college football. And that's that's really how most people kind of handicap things, right? They see something and they say, oh, that team played pretty well. Let's move pretty quick. And moving pretty quick is, is the right idea um, in college football. Uh, as for this game, oh, what were you asking about? Oh, yeah, when, when to fade them? I don't know. I mean, I, I pretty, I, I'm pretty sure that I will probably be betting Oregon at some point, uh, you know, for that. Uh, do you know anything about the handle that you guys are taking on this game? Uh, the Oregon game or the Colorado the State Oregon game? game. Um, I have not. Asked, the reason. Uh, what? Yeah. I'm sure it's up for a reason. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just wonder if, like, I mean, I'm sure the handle is pretty huge, or maybe it's a little bit less on such a lopsided one against Colorado State. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I have not seen any discussion about it. I know last week, I think that it was like 
the handle on the Colorado game, this might have been for a different sport, folks. I saw it on Twitter, but it was like more than all but like five other college football games combined for that week. It was insane how big right. of a gap there was between that one and the pack. Yeah. And then obviously, like most of the public money is on Colorado. Correct. <laughs> and the public wins wins again. And yep. uh yeah. We'll I mean, look, this Colorado team is going to get tested. And yeah. it's going to be it's going to be pretty soon and it's going to be fun. It will be fun. I think that we can say that definitively we don't know where they'll settle in, what the ceiling looks like for this team, but they will be fun regardless. Let's open up the board at across week three in college football. Where is the best value for you at FanDuel Sportsbook right now? For sure. I'm I'm going to go to this uh, Houston at TCU game. Um, so this is a game uh, that my numbers really like. So I, I actually have this TCU by two and the spread is seven and a half. Uh, oh, I guess Houston's at home. So TCU is a team I've talked a lot about. I think they're overrated. I still think they're overrated and they actually got quite a downgrade last week uh, against nickel state. Um, they were a 42 point favorite and they won, but the underlying numbers really didn't justify that at all. Houston's a little bit of a different story. They're probably not in the same league as a, a TCU, but uh, you know they were the underdog against UTSA and ended up winning by a field goal. They were a touchdown favorite uh, against Rice and actually ended up losing. But um, the results were, you know, within within a reasonable uh, within a reasonable amount of what the expectation was uh, before the game with the markets. Uh, their defense hasn't been good, but usually Dana Holgerson's teams tend to be pretty good on the offensive side of the ball. So my numbers really like TCU in this one. Uh, if I only have, if I have them winning by two and what I like about this game is it's also the question of like, how much do you want to pay attention to a game against an FCS team like TCU had last week? And even if you don't, take the adjustment for TCU against Nichols, you're still showing value against Houston here. This is the TCU team that, like I said, I mentioned I've been interested in fading since the preseason. Because of that, I actually really think there's value in, in Houston plus seven and a half here at home. Uh, it is their big 12 opener. I think they'll be excited. Uh, maybe the defense will even show up and come to play. Um, so this is a game that I like here. All right, right, you, right now, as you mentioned, Houston plus seven and a half is uh, minus 118 at FanDuel Sportsbook, but you do get the benefit of a win if it lands on seven. With that one as a take on TCU, that game, as Ed mentioned, is in Houston. That is all that we have here for this week on covering the spread from a college football perspective. But as mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow to talk some NFL with Ed. Ed, if people are looking for your newsletter, um, your discussion with Mike Craig, where can they find all those things? I talk with Mike Craig on my podcast, The Football Analytics Show. Check that out wherever uh, you get your podcasts. And then my free newsletter is at thepowerrank.com. Um, been, uh, people seem to really like Five Nugget Saturday. Uh, I've been saying if you need action on any given weekend, it is definitely the free service for you. And basically, ever since the NBA Finals, I've been putting a prop. Uh, at the beginning of usually, and it's something that I do. Uh, usually, Five Nugget Saturday is kind of more about what other people are saying, and and it is a service for, uh, you know, it's it. I, I basically try to curate sharp people's opinions, and uh, but I also do a little bit of myself, and and I've, you know, kind of since the NBA started, uh, since the NBA, I was like, oh, well, let me challenge myself to, to do some player props. And, and that's been fun, and it's been reasonably successful. And that will continue through football season. So had Ryan Tannehill over uh, half an interception last week, which didn't really take that long to win, which was nice. Uh, that's not – obviously, that's not going to be representative results every week. But check out Five Nuggets Saturday. You can sign up at the power, uh, thepowerrank.com. Could have had a Tannehill alt over because I think he had three picks in that game. That's what um, someone which, else told me today, and I've like I actually stopped paying attention to the game. Right, if you won your bet, why why care after that? I right. had Saints money line though, so I was very grateful because they could have blown that game, but Tannehill made sure that they they pulled through for me. There you go.
All right. Again, check that out. Uh, sign up for the newsletter by going to thepowerrank.com and check out the discussion with Mike Craig. We discussed before a very sharp college football mind uh, and college basketball mind as well by searching for the football analytics show wherever you get your podcasts. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast and check out FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Back with you once again tomorrow to break down NFL week number two. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 